Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the Pigments Drum Week. Today we are talking about hi-hats, which are a little bit easier than snare drums or kick drums. So with that being said, this is the track if you're unfamiliar with it. All done in pigments, by the way. Okay, I think you get the idea. So let's dive into this here. So in case you aren't familiar with the other videos of this week, we are doing the routing a little bit different within pigments here. So on the filter routing, we have split selected from the default sum and split is filter one, it goes to FX A and then filter two goes to FX B. That way we can process things individually per engine depending on which filter we want to send it to. So with that being said, let's dive into this here. So we're, we're really using two engines, engine one analog, engine two sample. So let's turn off sample and then let's look at analog here. So this is what we have. Let's take off our reverb because it can be a little bit distracting. So we basically have this, which is really a very simple tone to, to create. So in analog one, we have our unison voices all the way at eight are detuned all the way at hundred percent. And the stereo for this is about middle 47.2. Now for our oscillators, what we're gonna be doing is we have the sign here. We can use number two, but this one's down. It's kind of totally up to you if you wanna use the second one, but the process is sine wave here and then sine wave for the third one. And then we're cranking the crap out of the uh, frequency modulation. And a small little thing to kind of make things a little bit different. If you look here, there's a slight bit of modulation 0 0.02 for random number one. Random number one is gonna be sample and hold, sampled from white noise and re-triggered by the poly keyboard which means every time we hit a note, we get a new value over here. And if we get a new value, we attach that to the frequency modulation and that produces a different waveform every single time we hit the hi-hat. Because if we think about a hi-hat being struck, we're more sensitive to those types of frequencies. So we kind of do want it to change a little bit with every hit within reason, not too drastic as to, it, as to make it sound like a different instrument, but just enough so it fools our ears where we really don't know what's gonna be next. So just by changing that just a little bit, we never really get the same same uh, hit every single time. If we look over here on drift, we left that on at 0 0.010. So if you do bring this back in here, for example, like this, you're gonna get a slight bit of different phasing going on because the waveforms are gonna change within phase and, and so on and so forth. Totally up to you if you want to use that. So that one's kind of there set up already frequency modulated. So if you feel like you want to have it in your uh, patch, then just crank this up here and boom, there you go. Next up, we have this engine number two. So let's turn off this and let's look at engine number two. So what this is, and this is kind of interesting here. So we think of a hi-hat and obviously it's a metallic thing. So we kind of want to almost simulate a little bit of attack and a little bit of metallic stuff here. So this is going to filter number two, whereas this one here was going to filter number one. So we're kind of looking at the filter down over here. So engine number two, this sound here, it's a little bit low, but the important part is we're using a noise type of sound, noise carrier. So we want a lot of frequencies, a lot of content to work with. Then we're sending that here through the resonator. And we have this dry wet knob at about 0 0.608, the resonance all the way at the top, and then the inharmonic are pushing that at about 0 0.344 to give us a little bit metallic-y kind of tones here. And that's also gonna serve a little bit like our attack. Once once like the very tip of the uh, of the of the of the snare or the, the stick is gonna hit the hi-hat. And combined with the other one, we're gonna get pretty close to a closed type of hi-hat. Now the contouring, which is very important. So this first engine here is gonna be envelope number three, and the second one over here is going to be envelope number two. So kind of maybe a little bit backwards, but sometimes when you're creating stuff, you forget which envelope you throw on things, but it's really the concept that matters. So engine number one, this noise here, this contours envelope number three. So let's take a look at number three here. The attack is 11.9 milliseconds, decay 194 milliseconds, zero sustain, 100 milliseconds for the release. And then de the decay curve, which is important, is negative two. Now for the attack phase, this one right here is going to be modulated by envelope number two. Let's look at number two. And this tag is 4.2 milliseconds, which is a little bit different, a little bit earlier than the second one, because we want that attack first to come up and then the noise. So keep that in mind. That's a very thought out change here. 
And then the, the decay for an envelope number two is 113 milliseconds. So a little bit quicker than the second decay here. And then the sustain for both is zero, releases both at 100. And then this decay curve is negative two, same as it is over here. So that's mainly the main things we need to think about here. So with that being said, let's, let's take a look at some of these effect or these filters. So engine number one is going to filter number one. Now this is the SCM, which I kind of think this is a pretty cool sounding filter. Now this is going to be 7,837 Hertz and the resonance is at 0.5 over here. Now this mode's all the way to the left on bandpass. It's kind of really carve out that tone. Now number two is going to filter number two, which is also an SEM filter, but the cutoff is at 3.4K or 3.4, uh, 3.4.1 to be exact, and the resonance at 0.58. So once we have our tonality carved out in that sound in our envelopes, then let's move on to effects and see what's happening here. So the first one here is going to, uh, to a distortion and then to a multi-filter. So let's turn off engine number two and just listen to one. So we turn off this multi-filter and this distortion. This is what we would have. Pretty similar to what we had before, but these are very fine tooth comb things. Let's turn on our distortion here. Gives a little bit more metallic-y sound. This is going to be on soft clip. The dry wet's at 50%. The drive is 32 dB and no uh, filter after the distortion here. Now we have the multi-filter. Now I love the way this changes the sound here because we're just using a notch at a 24 slope, Q at 1.22, and the cutoff at 1000 hertz. It seems like 1000 is a good spot where a lot of that frequency just doesn't really make it. And there's a slight little notch in here, which kind of makes it a little bit more hi-hatty. See, this sounds metallic-y, but still noisy. With this filter in, it starts to sound a little bit more like a hi-hat. Now moving on from there, FXB is just going to be a little bit distortion on soft clip, 50%, drive 30.3 dB, just to get a little bit more metallic-y for our attack sound. And then once we have those two things, then we combine them with this auxiliary bank here by sending all the way to the top at 0 dB and then returning 0 dB as well. And now we just have a reverb here. And that's pretty much it. At the very end of this, you can always do your main contouring of your envelope BCA. And that was, that's going to be one millisecond for attack, decay uh, 910 for milliseconds, sustain zero and release 20, decay curve negative 7.36. And it's kind of, I always like to do the very last VCA at the very end because I want to make sure each individual part, each individual sound has their own envelope sounding correct. And then at the very end, then we can do the final amplitude envelope. Because sometimes uh, we have, if we, if we don't have them right, sometimes there can be some some distortion kind of leaking out a little bit of a tail there. And then that's what we're, well, while, Jesus Christ, that's why we will do the VCA at the very end to kind of prevent that from being audible at the very end. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's pretty much how this works here. And like I said before, once you have a very decent sound going and you have your effects going and you have it all in your track, it's not really going to sound like it's super fake or something like that because you're going to have a lot of stuff going on in your track and every you kick, your snares, your hats, your, your fills, bass, leads, vocals, a lot of that stuff going. So with everything together, it would sound like this. And also keep in mind, if you want to change the tonality of the hi-hat itself, you're going to be doing that with these cutoff knobs here and a little bit of the resonance here. More so with engine number one here, which is going to be this analog one, which we have our main contour of our noise, which is going to filter number one. So this cutoff here is going to carry much more weight as opposed to the second filter. And last thing, this is a closed hi-hat, right? So if you want something open, all it really, all you really have to change is going to be the envelope. So the the decay amounts or maybe a little, little bit of sustain, depending on how you want it to sound. But yeah, at the end of the day, if you want to change it from a close to an open, your envelopes are going to be where you want to spend most of your time. And also your main envelope BCA, make sure to change that as well, because we make these all long, but you forget about your envelope BCA. It's not going to, it's not going to matter because you won't be able to hear it anyway. So with that being said, hopefully you learned something with this uh, with this hi-hat video. The next video, we're going to be talking about symbols, and that's a slightly different process. Related, yes, but there's still a little bit different uh, ideas to go behind a symbol as opposed to a hi-hat. 
So with that being said, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.